Hey, what's up, YouTube? This is the Bass God. Hey, I'm um, about to do a 360.3 .3 review or overview. <clears throat> Basically, about the 360.3 .3 that I'm running. As you all know, the 360.3 .3 has to be on a laptop or any type of device that can load onto the system. Alright. Um, <clears throat> the 360.3, .3, it's a 8-channel uh, uh, DSP. Uh, it's a digital signal processor for some of y'all don't, that don't know. Um, now, as you see, these are all the uh, inputs on my vehicle. As y'all see back here, where the subwoofers are at, let me see if I can... Alright, right here is my subwoofers. Alright, I have my left subs and I have my right subs. Alright, right here these are where my kick panels are at my left speaker my right speaker and then I have my mid ranges my left my left door my right door and I have my left set of tweeters and I have my right set of tweeters all right now when it comes to tuning I this is basically the hardest part of um, I won't say the hardest part but it's the most it's the longest part when it comes to uh, getting the right tune. Now, as you all see with my subwoofers, uh, I have a bandpass set using the Butterworth crossover, and I got the X over slope at 24 dB, but the X over high pass filter at 20 hertz and is goes up to uh, 80 hertz. All right, so if you look at this slope right here. Uh, it kind of blends in right at 100 hertz right around there or well, it kind of dips down and that's where my mids take over at well my mids actually take over at 80 hertz but the subwoofer kind of blends in so nothing sounds separated all right now if you look at my settings on here i have everything from uh, let me go to this everything from 100 Hertz I got it set lower and I got everything else about the same level I probably might put this up probably put both of these up probably about the same length right there basically I just cut off all these frequencies right here because I don't need it everything I'm really concerned about is uh, 80 Hertz and higher that's really about it now uh, if you look at the Q factor the Q factor is basically how well those notes will play. So the higher the Q factor, uh, the less likely you will hear those notes. The lower the Q factor, the more those frequencies will play within the music. So as you see the Q factor, I have a set at two at the 100 hertz. And I probably want to set that at, yeah, two is fine. Normally I have my Q factor with notes that I normally play, I have it set at one, all right? Um, now you have your level right here, which I have it at zero dB, which that's the highest it go. Anything above zero dB, it'll be clipping involved. And then a delay right here. This is basically the distance between uh, my right speakers or my my right subwoofers and my left subwoofers. So I haven't measured that yet. Now I have my kick panel speakers. As you see, I have it bandpass Butterworth 12 dB octave crossover is at 80 hertz, and I got my low pass filter set at 4000 hertz. Um, now, this is where my mids kind of uh, pick up at, All right, it picks up at uh, 80 hertz and up, it takes over with the subwoofers. Um, where the subwoofers leave off at so that's when my mids blend in I have it at 4000 Hertz that's my high pass so that's the furthest my mids go up to now if you look at my delay all right four feet and I did this measurement with some measuring tape I measured my right mid or my right kick panel speaker and my left kick panel speaker and it measured off about four feet from one end to the other 
just so I can get that proper sound and I don't have any delay in my speakers. All right, and this is how I have everything set here. If I had an RTA, it'd be a lot better, but I don't have an RTA. Well, I got an RTA on my mobile phone, but I need the microphone for it. And let's see, now my door speakers. And my door speakers are basically the same thing, 12 dB, 80 hertz, 4,000 kilohertz. Now the delay between my right door and my left door, or the right door to the left door is about four and three quarters of a foot. So that's kind of why I got that set up. And if you look at my range, my range is between, I mean, it kind of plays in the 60, but not as much. I got the Q factor up, so it don't really play as much. So I got it between here and about 4,000 hertz. It's probably blending into like five. So that's my frequency range right there. And this is where I have my mid range is playing at. So as you see right there, that's where you hear all those tom toms and everything else playing. So then right here I have my tweeters. High pass, Butterworth 12 dB octave slope. And my tweeters pick up at 4,000 hertz. Uh, it picks up where the mid ranges leave off at. So my tweeters start playing, or they start tuning in at 4,000 hertz. And as you see, this is kind of, I got everything flat. It kind of dips in between the middle right here. And right around here, where you see 3,000 hertz is kind of where I kind of start adjusting it. I don't kind of raise my gain. I don't raise my gain up as much. I kind of have it like about 2 dB. But this is where the slope is at right here. It kind of picks up right up around here. I don't mess with anything 10,000 hertz or higher or kilohertz or higher. It don't really have much of an effect. Anything at 10,000 kilohertz and higher. So if you look at the whole di my whole diagram for my tweeters, if I go over to my mids, if you look at this, that's my tweeters. You see what my mids that it kind of blend in. And then you have my subwoofers. They kind of blend in. So all my uh, frequencies, all my subs, mids, and highs, they all overlap in each other in some type of sort. Uh, like I say, it can be a lot better. But I don't have an RTA where I can do that fine tuning like Steve Mead did. But um, just to ear and uh, be hearing it, it sounds really well to me. So... Um, you guys got any questions just hit me up oh yeah I want y'all to see this is my bass knob right here too so I click on that and if you look at my levels y'all know I've been doing demos my subwoof level is at 0 dB and my punch level is at 0 dB so I haven't even played with this yet when it comes to me um, playing my bass I haven't even turned this up yet so once my subs start breaking in a lot more I'm going to start using that punch knob get a lot more sound out of it out of my subwoofers so but well, this is a 360.3 i love it it takes time to fine tune this thing and like i said i know i'm not at uh 100 tuning but for now it sounds really good but i know it can sound better if i had an rta with an actual microphone in my vehicle getting that fine tuning but uh again if you guys got any questions about the 360.3 uh just hit me up and I definitely recommend this to anybody that's running car audio because you do not have to run inline crossovers. You don't have to buy um, <clears throat> any inline crossovers from like Crescendo or any other car audio company. Now, this 360.3 takes care of all that. All right, it will send a 4,000 hertz signal to your tweeters. Uh, basically, it separates all the frequency, and that's what I love about this. Uh, and it costs so much, it's about five, $600. Um, and that's the biggest thing about this is once you start setting it up, it does all the work for you. So y'all got any questions, just hit me up.